Folks, it's 2023. You know I have the heavy hitters coming on. And I met this person last summer. And I was like, wow. I was so impressed. And she gave me some amazing advice. She was like, you know, you've been, I've been there where you are, where you start off a business. You're trying to be successful. And guess what? That was very, very inspiring. And you know what? I had to have her on the show. So the next voice you hear was somebody who was very inspiring to me for my career who has said, hey, you know, whatever you need, let me know, reach out. And she has a very successful business that we're going to also talk about. So we're going to talk about all this on the night after, the, right after this. Pandora's Box is a mod, vibrant, woman-owned lifestyle boutique located in the historic Federal Hill neighborhood of Baltimore, Maryland. Pandora's Box offers unique selection of the latest trends, jewelry, gifts, home decor, and personal accessories. Their products are high quality, affordably priced, and handpicked with a sense of humor and authenticity, making them items that everyone can relate to. They are known for sourcing memorable and relevant keepsakes that allow customers to give from their hearts without the stress that comes from doing so. You can count on Pandora's Box to help you select and package the perfect gift. Visit Pandora's Box at 50 East Cross Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21230. Visit them online at pandorasboxboutique.com. Visit on social media at Shop Pandora's Box Boutique. is Baltimore's largest maker space, offering access to tools ranging from 3D printers to welders and training in how to use them. OpenWorks also offers affordable studio space, a coffee shop, and fun-free events throughout the year. But OpenWorks is more than a public workshop. It's a community of creative professionals, students, seniors, entrepreneurs, and makers of all kinds. Check out the website at www.openworksbmore.org or Instagram at open underscore works underscore bmore for class schedules, membership options, and more. No Picks After Dark is sponsored by Snug Books, an independent bookstore serving Northeast Baltimore and beyond. In addition to featuring new books for all ages, the store also carries cards, stationery, gifts, games, and more. Visit snugbooks.com to shop online, learn more about the store, read our latest newsletter, and find a calendar of events, or come browse the store in person. Snug Books is located at 4717 Harford Road, next to Zeke's Coffee in Hamilton, Laurelville. There is free parking behind the store and open hours are Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Welcome to the No Picks at the Dark Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Dante. Folks, you know we have the heavy hitters coming in. It's 2023. We're starting this off with a bang. And I'm so excited to have my guest on. Miss Teresa, how are you doing today? I'm doing so well, Aaron. Thank you so much for having me on. It is absolutely a pleasure to be here with you today to talk about all of the things that we discussed when we met earlier in the summer and to share a little more about myself and my business. And that's where we're here. Because I, I really, I want to give people their flowers. And we got to give people flowers while they're alive. And you were very inspirational when you spoke at Mako Conference. And you were telling me about what you've gone through, the businesses, the travel, just how you started your business, how hard it is, and how you're doing it, and you're grinding every day. I really appreciate that. And that's why we wanted to have you on the show. Well, Thank I you. appreciate that. Thank you so much. So let's first talk about your business. Let's talk, give a name, the name of your business and what you do. Absolutely. So um, my business is Ashler Government Relations. And what we do is we are a small boutique lobbying firm. We work with government relations, public affairs on a state, local and federal level, representing clients of all different backgrounds and all different entities. So whether they need a bill passed that helps the community or some regulations change, that's really my passion is in making the community better. So that's a lot of the work that I do on behalf of my clients for business. Nice, nice. That's really cool. And again, I, I love what you're doing. Uh, you're now you're out of your your office is in Annapolis, right? Yes. Yeah, so we have an office based on State Circle right behind the State House. Makes it wonderful when general general assembly starts in the state of Maryland, which is generally um, the second Wednesday through the second Monday in April. So January 11th is our start this year, and I'm ready to hit the ground running for everyone. Nice. So let's give you a little quick background about you. Are you from Maryland? I am actually. So born and raised. Um, I grew up in Bowie, 
I went to Towson University and lived in the city, actually bought my first home in Canton, but lived in Highland Town for a little bit, that it did a short stint in D.C., and I'm back in Bowie, um, which is great. Now, you told me a little bit about your background. You did a little advertising. That's like, is that your background? I did. So in a past life, I had an advertising agency. I call it a past life because um, a lot of people questioned me when I was going into government relations. How, how do you make this switch? Like, how, how do these translate together? And they're so similar, I've found. And, and when you have an entrepreneurial, business-minded spirit, which I definitely do, um, it made it very easy for me. Um, but when I lived in Baltimore City... I, that's, I worked in advertising and really learned the business side of, of everything. And one day said, I could do this for myself. So I'm going to go out on a limb. And my, I knew my clients trusted me and I knew that I had delivered results for them. So I had no doubt that they would follow me when I did so. And it, it was a great ride. But at one point I realized that their passion wasn't there mm. and I had to reassess what I was really doing. Mm, so they hit the advertising in the past, and not I mean that, that correlates to what you do now. You're, you're talking, you're you're grinding, you're hustling out here. What about like a, growing up in Bowie? What was a favorite memory growing up as a childhood, like growing up in the area? So it, it's actually it's great. My parents still live two miles away from me, um, so and they're in the same house that I grew up in, which is just a blessing in itself. Um, I had a very happy childhood. I I probably just riding bikes. And just that wholesome being outside. I love to be outside, even as an adult. That's my decompression time is barefoot in the garden. Um, so definitely riding bikes with all my friends in the neighborhood growing up. If, if I could pinpoint one out of many, many happy memories, that that would definitely be it. Nice. Uh, you know, what? actually, that you brought me back when you were talking about that. Um, growing up, I remember my parents like, get on the bicycle, go. And I used to ride when I lived in Baltimore. I lived in Randallstown area, right off 695, Milford Mill area. People know about that. And I used to ride my bike all the way down to Baltimore City, all the way down to Northern Parkway, to Wabash, and drive and ride my bike and just go up and down Liberty Road to Liberty Heights. And nobody would ask where you were. They'd be like, hey, you know, we don't have cell phones. As long as you got home before the lights came on, that's what it was about. And so I just remember that. And when you set the light driving and riding a bike, being outside was so much fun. Kids don't know what it is about right now. They used to be outside playing in the creek or a creek or however you want to pronounce it and just doing kids kid things so those type of things that i've missed doing so thank you for sharing that well we'll have to get you outside more then definitely cause... definitely <laughs> definitely definitely so when we talk about you, you know you you end up going to towson you didn't want to be you didn't college park was too big for you you didn't want to do the college. you know college park was too close to home uh... i wanted to be close but i didn't want once again, I love them to death. I didn't want my parents to just knock on the door on a Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. When you're 18, I mean, that's kind of how it is. Now I'm like, hi, I see them every other day. But uh, so Towson was the right choice. It was still close enough to be able to drive home when I needed to see friends and family for holidays. Um, and ironically enough, I did do some classes at the University of Maryland my last semester, um, just based on trying to get out and hit the ground running with some work so nice nice so you know getting through college and you do advertising thing and you know did you always did you ever always want to stay in maryland <clears throat> or did you ever want to move away you know it's interesting because i love to travel and i have such a wanderlust spirit to me mm -hmm. um and any time that i can get on a plane i i will get on a plane with no planning so i i planned iceland i think it was my first session working or right before my first session working in the General Assembly. Mm. And it was just on a whim. And it was a great solo trip. It was, it's, those trips for me are reflective of the mind and to learn and see how other cultures really live is, is of the utmost importance. But I also think being grounded here in Maryland has allowed me to do so. Um, family is very important to me. My roots are very important to me. And so while I love to see and, you know, maybe daydream about, living somewhere else or being somewhere else and hopefully we'll have vacation homes somewhere else one day this is this is definitely my roots and um i i, I love the state of maryland i really nice. do so what we'll do is folks we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna talk about her company we're gonna get into everything that she's been doing we're gonna talk about her story of how she was like i'm gonna be an entrepreneur entrepreneur that's what it's about you wanted the podcast is about the stories of the unheard, and then you want to learn about how she did something that was very significant that blew my mind. And I can't wait for you guys to hear that. A little teaser coming up. Folks, we'll be right back with these messages. The No Picks After Dark podcast is proudly partnered with Maggie's Farm. 
Located at 4341 Hartford Road, Mackey's Farm offers a unique dining experience with delicious handcrafted cocktails and mouth-watering cuisine from falafels to scallops and everyone's favorites, honey sriracha cauliflower wings. Open for dinner from 4 p.m. until 10 p.m., Tuesday through Saturday, and for brunch, Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. with delectable chicken and waffles, shrimp and grits, biscuits and gravy, and more. Check out Maggie's Farm on Instagram and Facebook for daily and weekly food specials. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m. Or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. When you give to United Way, your gift could be the first spark of something bigger. It can help provide nutritious food for a family in need. Because eating healthy shouldn't be a luxury. It can help someone with housing challenges and be a catalyst for a new beginning. Because a safe space to call home is the foundation for building a better future. Give today. Spark something bigger. And folks, we are back on the No Picks of Dark podcast. I'm so excited with Miss Teresa. How are you? I'm doing well, Aaron. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming up to Baltimore and hanging out for me a little bit northeast. We always, always call this Disney World of Baltimore. You know, people come in here, relax, chill. There's coffee, there's food, whatever you want here. I love it. And as somebody who lived in the city for over 11 years, just watching the transformation and some of the different areas change and grow and bring in good local businesses is, it's just, it's really nice to be here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, Let's talk about your company. <clears throat> Let's talk about why did you want to step out and be your own boss? That's because that's terrifying. <clears throat> you know, for some people, it's terrifying. For me, it has never scared me. So I started my first business with about $200 in my bank account, had just gotten separated from a marriage and, and just knew in my heart I had watched. And this is this was the advertising business. I had watched so many different owners of companies do things wrong, right? Where just the lack of customer service or poor financial management or not allowing the right people that were really bringing in business to grow. And I said, why can't I do this for myself? And I didn't know what I was doing. I, I can't even say that I had a good mentor, um, but I, I navigated, I figured it out. And I've always known that I, will not be the smartest person in the room, but I can work the hardest. And so one thing led to another, and I had conversations with some clients that I had brought on board to my ad agency that I was an employee at. And I said, this is what I'm thinking. And will you follow me? And they said, of course, you you are working very hard for us and you're delivering results. And so that was my first client. And I, I learned how networking really picked up other clients. So then moving forward into government relations, um, it was it was kind of the same thing, right? I had to learn what I was doing. So when I was still working in advertising with my own company, I reached out to a couple nonprofits to volunteer just to help them do their social media, their website, nothing, um, nothing government relations related. And that was probably the last thing I did for the first nonprofit. I learned how to take up the take out the trash, reorganize files. And I knew how to do those things anyways, but those were the first things I did. Then I learned how to run a state PAC, a federal PAC, um, how to do donor base uh, services, how to fundraise, and then eventually learned the lobbying side. And when I stepped away from a very high salary to take a full-time job at this first nonprofit. And so I did that for a year. And then was couldn't live off that salary any longer as much as I loved the work. And I had a dear friend who had asked me to 
come work for their uh, organization in Annapolis as a lobbyist. I kept pushing it off. I sent her other referrals. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And then eventually I said, I, I need to take that next step. And so I took a position there and I still credit her as being one of the smartest and best lobbyists I've ever seen. She's she's worked across the aisle in a variety of positions and really learned a lot from her. Um, and then knew after some things went down with the organization that it was it was time for me to take that next step the next summer. So, mm, so you said I'm gonna jump out here on faith. I'm gonna jump out here on faith and it, faith in myself and where other people might not have had it. I know a lot of people looked at me like I was crazy because they didn't they didn't know me. That's fine. Um, and said, are you, are you serious? I said, I'm serious. I, I, I know the business side. I will figure everything else out. Mm. Um, and so now that was 2019. Two, yeah. So the summer of 2019, I started building everything out and um, laid the groundwork, set up a website, um, got some business cards did my EIN, all, all, all of the background stuff that you have to do to really right. be like, all right, but I now I got to find some clients. Right. So you probably forgot. I remember. See, I remember that. Yep. There was a key date. That's where that you and I spoke. Now, let's take us through this story about how you told me about how you you bet it you bet on yourself, and it was <clears throat> Mako Conference. It cost mm-hmm. Mako. Shout out to the Mako team, um, Kevin and the crew, Victoria. You had a situation where it's expensive to go to Mago. Mago's not cheap to go to. Hotel's not cheap to go to Ocean City. Uh, it's a conference, uh, Maryland Association of Con- Counties, correct? Correct. And it's a big conference. A lot of big heavy hitters are all from the state of Maryland. You have uh, every corporation comes to this meeting. How did you end up getting there? Tell a story about that. Yeah, so um, at this point, once again, I feel like it's very similar to having little to no money when you're getting a business off the ground, trying to figure out your way through. Um, but being an entrepreneur and always thinking around um, how to achieve, because I knew I had to be there. I knew that I needed to start having the conversations with people, telling them what I was doing, and find some clients. And so in my brain, I said, well, I can, I can, I never owned an Apple Watch. I, I was kind of usually like, I was like, I don't know why I need one. Now it's great for work. But mm-hmm. I went, I said, I could put this, I could put this on my phone plan and then I can go pawn it and I will have enough money to get through the week. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, I think by the time that I paid for the hotel, I had $25 left to make it through the week, but I was there mm-hmm. and that's all that mattered to me. And it was funny when I was driving here, I said, oh my goodness, my, I left my watch on the charger. But every day, you know, when you and I, I said, I have it on every day because it's a reminder of, of what I had to do to get here. And I, I went back for that watch two weeks later and, and tell, I was t- able to do that. And what'd you tell the guy when you dropped the at the pawn shop? What'd you tell the guy? I said, I'll be back for this. I will be back for this in the next week or two. I said, so I'll see you very soon. And that to me was a sacrifice that a lot of people do hear about. Entrepreneurs got to make a lot of sacrifices in life that you may not have. You may other people don't have to see. And that's like that could be home life, that could be family life. There's you're at the studio until late at night. You're at, you're studying all night. You're working. You're at you're doing policy. So to hear that story is inspirational. I really want people to hear that. That's that because that's very important. No, and I appreciate that because it it is very hard for entrepreneurs. And we we first spoke about that when we met. Right. Um, that it can be very isolating. People don't know. There, you know, other and I love all my other lobbyists in Annapolis, and I'm very excited about all the things we do. But unless you're self-employed, people don't understand. There's there's sometimes where you're like, hey, I can't do this, or mm-hmm. um, I could be there, but not necessarily in the capacity that needs to be, um, or I can't contribute to this this day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but one day I will be able to, and that's the glory of it. It's it's having the freedom to make whatever you want. Mm-hmm. So then going through all this, you know, being, uh, you start you start your business, you get a couple clients while you're down there because that was the hustle, that was what mm-hmm. you're trying to do. Tell us, talk us about the process of starting your business and how lobbying really works. So it's like because when people hear lobbying, they hear like the big bad wolf, the interest groups. That's what people naturally hear. You know what? Talk, walk us through all that. Yeah, so it was funny because I'd say 10 years ago, I couldn't have defined what a lobbyist was either, mm-hmm. right? Um, although, other than what you see in a movie, and it's that thank you for smoking, big shark, uh, paid hired gun lobbyist. Right. And 
I have found that really what it is, it's advocating for things on behalf of clients and just having conversations, right? Um, so it's meeting with elected officials. It's learning what your clients' needs are. So my business book is made up of things that really will make the state of Maryland better. That that's That's my passion. I will never pick up a client or an issue that I can't personally stand behind with my brand and my name because branding is everything. Mm. So when I was thinking of even what, what's my tagline going to be for this business? What's this business name going to be? I chose Ashler Government Relations because an Ashler is a cornerstone and you it's the foundational block to build anything. And so the tagline ended up being for a better state of mind. So when you're building a strong foundation, you can have that better state of mind. Mm -hmm. So all of my clients, um, the majority of them are nonprofits, uh, local governments, municipalities that are really doing the work, right? They're rolling up their sleeves. It's an honor for me to represent them and their issues and what they work on. And so whether it's 90 days in Annapolis or throughout the year, I'm, I'm having those conversations based on the connections that I've built. And that's really what lobbying is. It's just having an honest conversation with the facts and the data of why something needs legislated or shouldn't be legislated. Would you say, do you, are a lot of your clients nonprofit clients or are a lot of them, like, I guess because you, you always hear the big bad wolf of like the interest groups. They control a lot of what's going on in the Mar state of Maryland. Would you say, I mean, I mean, there's pros and cons to it, but I mean, what you, from what you see, from what you do, you know, I sleep really well at night, okay. so that's that's a good pro for me. Right, and and they're doing good things. So, for example, I have one client. Um, I'll give them a shout out. Um, it's the Maryland Association of Resources for Family and Use, also known as MARFI. They represent providers. They're an association that represents providers of um, social services, social workers, mm -hmm. foster care. Like, that's good stuff. Those, mm -hmm. they, they need a voice in Annapolis. Um, I also represent um, recovery housing and um, prenatal health care. And it just all the things that are so needed mm -hmm. and that haven't had a voice. So that's that's really where my passion lies, and that's that's different from hey, throw we'll throw twenty thousand dollars at you to push this bill that is probably harmful or may, maybe not, but right. if I don't care what it pays at the end of the day, if it's if it's something that doesn't feel right, I, I I'll refer it to someone else. So tell take us a little bit about you through your life when session happens. Like pretty much, are you pretty much you cannot find you for ninety days. It is pretty much intense. From what I've heard from people, they have they have they they share uh, apartments down there. They literally have a cot they lay on all <laughs> night. They they're working all throughout the day. I've been asked to come down to night towns up down there for a couple of times and hang out and do and do my podcast live at one of the bars down there. So that's something. So you might see me in Annapolis, folks. You might see me. But tell us a little bit about that ninety days when it's, when it's ground running. Well, we're definitely going to get you down to Annapolis <laughs> during session so you can see it firsthand, <laughs> um, because it's fun. Um, this year specifically, I think it'll be an entirely different level, mm -hmm. pending no pandemics. Knock on wood. Mm -hmm. um, we have a ton of new members coming in, so really getting to know them. But it's it's ninety days of just hustle mm -hmm. um, from the moment it starts that one. That Wednesday, they, they get um, sworn in at noon. And then there are different lobbying firms that open their doors to everyone mm. that have nice welcoming parties. So you go place to place to place to place. And it's, it's a great community, right? They welcome everyone. It doesn't matter if you're another lobbyist or not. And then from that point on, um, and more than likely at the end of December, legislation starts dropping. So you're reviewing the bills. You're starting to track the bills. Um, lobbying actually on behalf of bills that you know that your clients want, that starts the day after the last session ends. Mm. So that's ongoing. Um, but the 90 days is really when it, the conversations before matter, but the 90 days you are sitting in hearing rooms, you are running up the state house stairs to chase someone to be like, hi, I need you to vote for this or don't vote for this, or you need this piece of data. Um, or can I still count on your vote? Um, and they are very long nights. Um, mm. It'll be interesting to see if, so in past years before COVID happened, some delegation hearings started at 8 a.m. So you would have to be ready to go, parked, and in those buildings at 8 a.m. Mm. 
I am hearing those are still going to be virtual just because they're taking some buildings down moving. So hopefully we don't have to be in person at 8 a.m., but you'll still have to be there by 9 or 10, right? So it, it is a long day, different meetings, different committees, monitoring both the Senate and the House, um, trying to fit in time to find food, and then waking up and doing the same thing. Uh Nighttime lobbying is also a thing, right? So you're not just lobbying during the day. It's sometimes sitting at a restaurant waiting for that one person that you know goes into that restaurant to have that conversation mm. when it's a little quieter than it is in the Senate or the House. Mm. So it is, it's a lot, um, but it's it's great. It brings us all back every year. And um, yes, a lot of people do sleep on their couches and get apartments. That's exciting. It's very exciting to hear that. And just with the new administration, there's a whole new administration coming in. So it's a whole new team coming through there. But I mean, sure, it'll be exciting for you and, and your co- people you represent for what's going to happen going forward. Um, for your company, how do people get a hold of your company? <clears throat> how do they reach out? Is there certain people you work with? Or is there certain areas you work in? So I work across <coughs> all areas. Um, okay. And I will call it the gift and the curse is I'm in every committee in both Mm. the Senate and the House, where some firms have a niche where they might just be in our Health and Government Operations Committee or in our Education, Health, and Environmental Committee in the Senate. I'm building a pretty diverse book. By the time we get to session, I'll have over 20 clients in just three and a half years. And I'm very excited about that. So for people to get a hold of me, um, my website is Ashler Government Relations, ashlergr.com. But if you just type in Ashler Government Relations, they'll be able to find it. Um, I also do a lot of referral work. So if people know somebody looking um, to have representation, a lot of my work has actually been referrals. Do you want people to walk away from this interview from you and I speaking today? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the most important thing is um, the people that I represent, the people that I work with know that I'm genuine. So not only delivering results on their behalf, but my word is everything. And at the end of the day, I don't care what someone's background is, what family they're born into, where they're born, I value people by their word. And that is the most um, tangible, important thing for me on on a daily basis. And that's how I value the people around me. And that's how I want people to value me. So when I say something to a client or to a state elected official or local or federal elected official, I mean it, and I will deliver on it, and that they can trust that I will treat their business or their organization just like I would treat my own. Okay, so I don't, I'm not gonna let you out of here without a speed round. You know, it's always a speed round for every guest that comes to here. So, favorite Super Bowl halftime show? Ooh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that it was whatever year the Redskins, now the, oh, the Commanders won, and I know I'm in Baltimore right now. <laughs> but. I did live in Baltimore when they were in the Super Bowl, so I, I guess I could pick that one. <laughs> okay. who If you could pick a all-time concert you went to, which concert? Who would you go see again in the concert? So I love all types of music. This is a, this is a hard one. No, yeah. I saw Jay-Z and Justin Timberlake at M&T Bank. Was, was there, pretty amazing. I was at that one. Um, yeah. I also went to iHeart Music Festival in Miami one year, Ooh. and that was just so if, a variety. I just, it depends on the day. Gotcha. I don't know if anybody's really so pulling my socks off. It's weird for me. I saw Foo Fighters at Madison Square Garden. Nice. And so I like my hip hop concerts, but I think bands mm-hmm. do way better because they really put a lot of their, their stage and whatnot. Um, so I, I like food. I saw Bruce Springsteen at um, uh, Blue Pony. I saw, not Blue Pony, but I'm going to say wrong. Somebody's going to correct me, but it's in Asbury Park. Okay. That's his spot. So I've seen him live there. So, I mean, I like a lot of different concerts. It all depends on, like, the vibe of it. Kind of like yeah, yeah. Um, like, sometimes, like, a, going to a show at 8 by 10 is great, right? Right, right. sure, true. Snowball or ice cream? Neither. Neither. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> Crabs or crab cakes? Vegetarian. Oh, yeah, I forgot you are. Yeah, no, I forgot you are. You definitely are. So, But I like Old Bay, so. You like Old Bay. <laughs> I get that. Um, favorite place to go vacation? Somewhere I haven't been before. Okay. You're, you're, you're being tough. You're, being, you're definitely would, a lobbyist here over here. Just I like, know. Oh. But it's no. true. Like, that's why I said. If I can find a cheap flight anywhere and I haven't, that's the wonderlust. Well, what's your favorite, what's your, one of your favorite places to visit? 
Okay, so we'll go up that Iceland was amazing. It's cold. Natural beauty. It's cold. I know, and I went in January. <laughs> it's a little, a little dark. <laughs> a little... <laughs> um, and Budapest. Ooh. If I have to say two for two totally different reasons: one, natural beauty; two, the history, and still natural beauty. But the history is just if if you could pick two places to go, those would be my two recommendations. Got you. And I would go back to go back? both of those places. Okay. And what's the best advice you've ever received? Hmm. Um, am I allowed to, you it's like, okay, you... think with your head, not with your ass. Gotcha. And I didn't understand it at the time, mm -hmm. but it is, it's pretty broad. And it, I said, I don't know if I could say this, no, you but, can say, no, but no, it's, it's the girl folk show, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it makes a lot of sense in a variety of ways. So before we leave, say your company's name, so let's talk about again, where they can find the website, how they can reach out to you. So my company is Ashler Government Relations, and the website is ashlergr.com. And if you just type in Ashler Government Relations online, you should be able to find it. It's Ashler GR on Facebook, Ashler GR on Twitter, Ashler GR on Instagram, and any other social media platform. Nice. Again, thank you so much, Mr. Teresa, for coming to Baltimore, hanging out in the No Pixel Dark podcast. I'm glad we finally made this happen. This has been amazing. I learned so much today, and I hope our listeners have learned and what viewers have watched listening and just like wow this is really cool but really what hit home to me this story is the sacrifice you made to get where you want to get and that's what's all about people need to hear those stories to inspire them because there could be the entrepreneur out there right now who's like i want to be a lobbyist i never knew what it was about i never knew what they did i only saw what they, the big bad what they saw on tv and you're showing them hey we're doing something different we're trying to make a change trying to make things for the better for the positive so thank you so much for coming down hanging out in notebooks Air dark studios Thank you to the guys who are doing the work behind the cameras right now. And folks, thank you guys for tuning in. You know where to check me out at nopixelofdark.com. That's all on, on my socials. I'm leaving TikTok and doing the robot for you if you want to check it out in 2023. Again, love, peace, we're out. Mm -hmm.